What if I told you something as simple as the way you set your feet up at a dress when you're hitting your driver could be costing you 20 or 30 yards off the tee? Well, I'm gonna walk through exactly how your body should properly work in the golf swing, some things that could really be limiting your range of motion, making you feel tight, making you hit it shorter, and the correct ways to set up properly, that way you're free, you're loose, and you pick up some serious distance. Let's go and get started. All right, so I got Q here. He's gonna be manning the flight scope. I'm gonna hit a couple shots with some various foot positions and let's see how that can affect the distance. So first of all, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set up and talk about what's going on in the swing. So let's talk about the backswing first. So as I swing to the top, what's happening is my hips are rotating and let's imagine my feet are perfectly square to the camera. As my hips rotate, essentially what's happening is my feet are turning in. So if I didn't have my hips rotate, this is what my feet are doing in the backswing. So my hips are staying here, my feet are doing that in the backswing. In my downswing, my feet are doing this. Actually, I would be like that at the finish of my swing. Kind of looks goofy when you don't rotate your hips, but that's exactly what's going on. Now the problem is, most players that I see, especially if you get a little bit up in age, have a really tough time from this hip socket internally and externally rotating their feet that can throw the brakes on your swing speed. Let's start with the backswing. So if I'm just looking at my left foot first, in the backswing, it's pretty easy to rotate and make a good, a good turn if my left heel comes slightly off the ground. So that's gonna, if I keep my heel on the ground, I try to rotate, my hips can only go to here. If I let them slightly li lift a little bit, and we're not talking a ton, maybe an inch, half inch, whatever, just loosen that up, that's gonna allow my hips to rotate more. So in the backswing, if you've been taught this idea or have this idea that you wanna keep your feet firmly planted to the ground, I think that's really gonna limit your range of motion. It's really gonna hurt your distance. So when you're swinging back, particularly with the left foot, let it loosen up a little bit. Let your left knee loosen up a little bit. I don't have to keep it locked and rigid and straight ahead. I can let that kick in a little bit. That allows my hips to rotate more. That allows my body to rotate more. But let's put it to the test. Let me hit one now, keeping my left foot down with the idea that I'm gonna keep my feet pretty rigid. So I'm gonna keep my feet straight, not a lot of movement, and I'm gonna go ahead and give one a good rip. There we go, pretty solid, dead straight. Not a bad looking shot. What are the numbers on that one, Q? Got 112 club head speed and a 267 carry. So not too bad, 112 and 267. That doesn't mean that if you're swinging 80 miles an hour, this isn't gonna help. That doesn't mean that it's, it's straight applicable. So when I loosen up the hip or loosen up the left foot, I bet I'm gonna see a distance gain, a swing speed gain. The same thing would be happening if we're swinging 80 miles an hour or if we're swinging 150 miles an hour. It doesn't matter what you're swinging, it just matters what your body is doing to get the most out of that. So let's go ahead and try one now where I do what I just talked about. I loosen up that left heel a little bit it allows my hips to turn more. It's gonna allow my shoulders to turn more. And let's see what that does to my swing speed. There we go. Almost an exact straight line. Another nice straight one there. And I think I swung a little faster on that one. What's the flight scope say? Yeah, 119.5 club head speed. Uh, carry distance was 297.3. Okay, so the, I picked up about 30 yards more distance by loosening that left heel. The reason there is, it allows my body to move freely. It allows me to load up more so that I can generate speed in a more efficient way. Look, think of like a Fred Couples or a Davis Leather Third. Those aren't tight, rigid, short, compact swings. Those are nice and free flowing. That's how Fred Couples still booms it out there, even though he's in his 60s now. That's exactly how he's doing that. Now let's take a look at the other foot, the right foot. Or actually, let's focus in on left foot on the, on the finish now. We talked about how to loosen up a little in the backswing. What about in the follow through? Well, when I come to my follow through, if my hips are rotating this way, my foot is staying straight forward, it's tough to rotate my hips much past this. If you're a little bit up in age, maybe you're a little tighter, it's probably gonna be tough to get here. Maybe you'd be lucky to rotate your hips this much without that front foot kind of blocking them. That's because what's happening in the follow through is essentially my front foot is doing that. I know it looks crazy again, but that's internal rotation coming from the hip socket. A great way to test that is to go ahead and hold your foot up in the air, rotate your foot inward and see how far you can go without moving your hips. Rotate your foot outward and see how far you can go. 
that's how much you can rotate your hips with keeping your feet flat. If you find that you're limited at all when you turn it in, then you really need to flare this foot out. So if I start now, instead of my foot being straight forward, and I can only go to here, what happens if I rotate my foot, say 20 or 30 degrees open? Now I can go all the way to here before it's neutral, and then I can really rotate much more in the follow through. So that's a quick, easy cheat to be able to get some more swing speed if you're a little tight or if you'd like to be a little freer in your swing. So I'd start with a normal setup, feet forward, rotate that foot a good 20, 30, even 45 degrees if you're super tight. If you're super tight, I'd love to see the front foot like this. If you put the front foot like that and you keep it there, the distance is gonna go down the tube. It's not gonna be good. So let me go ahead and try to do another one. I'll even exaggerate here with that left foot open and I'll see what happens. There we go, another good swing. And I really felt like in my follow through, definitely a lot more freed up with that front foot rotated out. What was the numbers on that one, Q? 119.8 uh, club head speed and uh, carry distance was 287.9. Okay, so I'm carrying them, you know, 20, 30 yards farther by being able to rotate through, picking up about seven miles an hour more distance. Now the last one here, let's talk about the right foot, particularly in the backswing. We'll go over the downswing too, but most importantly, the backswing. If my right foot is straight forward again like this, as I rotate in the backswing, I can only turn my hips a very small amount if I'm not very flexible. Again, do the test. Hold your foot up, try to internally rotate it. I don't wanna rotate my hips like this. Keep my hips straight and try to rotate that left foot. If I can only go to say here, you gotta flare that foot out. By having that right foot a little more opened up or this way, in the backs or at a dress that allows you to rotate more and get more swing speed and feel free and easy and like your swing is smooth while you're doing that so do the test i recommend playing that back foot kind of flared out a little bit here in the in this address position finally when you're following through same as the left foot i've got to get this foot to swivel around if i keep this foot on the ground as i come into my follow through that's like taking a break on your entire body and just locking it down. It's like having an anchor attached to this leg. You're gonna be slow, slow, slow. I wanna go ahead and get that foot to rotate all the way through all my spikes up in the air so now my hips and my shoulders and my body can come on through that. So if you do that, again, you're gonna free up your swing and you're gonna have more distance than you thought was possible. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. All right, another good one there, kind of down the left edge of the fairway. Same thing, I'm guessing probably the swing speed is around 119 and kind of similar numbers. Yep, right on the dot, 119 mile per hour club head speed on that one. Carry distance went up to 296.9. Okay, so not too bad, happy with those. Now, I talked a lot about the setup position. What about the rest of the swing cue? What do you see that can really help people add an extra five or 10 miles an hour? Right, so everything Clay talked about there was all to get you to increase your range of motion, to create more space and time to accelerate the club. And that's all done in the lower body. Now what we want to do is see what we can do with our upper body to be able to achieve the same kind of thing. So what we can do is actually elevate our arms more. So if we go over here, I want you to get in kind of a flat top of the backswing position okay. where your arms would be really flat, kind of in the same angle as your shoulders here. You see like Matt Kuchar to be kind of in this kind of position here. You notice how his elbow here is kind of in cinched toward his side a little bit. Mm -hmm. and we probably all heard we want to be connected in the swing, but we actually don't want to be connected at the top of the swing because what happens is, is it can restrict how much time and space we have to accelerate the club. See how low the arms are here. It's hard to create much acceleration in the club to do that. So what we can do is elevate the arms. See how his trail arm here is now disconnecting from his body. His elbow might even fly a little bit, which is completely fine. Yeah, like and Jack Nicholas, somebody like that, has a exactly. flying elbow. Bubba Watson, you know, he's up here, way up here like Bubba Watson. There's a reason why Bubba Watson's one of the top guys on the tour in driving distance every single year because he gets his hands really, really up high here. So what you want to feel like if you go back to a dress here, okay. that you want to feel like you're lifting the arms up. You're not just rotating as you're going back, but you're also lifting at your shoulders here, just like that, exactly. So if you have that same kind of feeling that you're lifting, think merry-go-round, or not merry-go-round, Ferris wheel, lifting and rotating instead of a merry-go-round where you're just kind of turning around. If you have that right kind of feeling and let the arm disconnect from the body, 
let the elbow fly a little bit, that's gonna allow you to get the hands really nice and high and allow you to get a lot of speed at impact. So Clay, how about you do one where you do a nice flat one where you can get, uh, you know, you get that good rotation, but get a flat swing where, and see what kind of numbers we get there, and then do one where you get that same good rotation, but you get the hands nice and high so we can get more space and time. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people get confused on this too. They're thinking that, that we would say, hey, Matt Kuchar, you know, can't hit it very far. Well, Matt Kuchar hits it pretty far. If you're big and strong and fast and a good athlete, you're gonna be able to still hit it far no matter what your hand height is in the backswing. But Matt Kuchar could hit it a lot farther. I mean, he does a lot of things, basically ideal, perfect. It was a really good swing. And he could have another 10 miles an hour possibly if he got those hands a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and try it out here. And let's do the one, the first, the flatter type swing with it more around the body. Ooh, I hit that one nice and solid right down the middle of the fairway or kind of right side of the fairway. Not gonna be able to do a ton better than that on kind of the low hand swing. What was my numbers on that one, Q? So a uh, 107.6 club head speed, uh, 293 total distance, and that's with a 1.5 smash. So you really can't hit it much better than that. That's about as good as you can do. So if you're big and tall and strong and, and you're already hitting it, you know, 300 yards and you're using the flat swing, hey, that's fine. You could hit it farther, but maybe distance isn't really a key for you. If you're swinging 90 miles an hour and struggling with distance, maybe that would be better to try out kind of the higher hands type swing like we're talking about here. So in this one, I'm gonna feel like my hands, almost like there's a ceiling above me and I'm just gonna punch my hands straight up through the ceiling. If you watch this on video, you're gonna see, this is not, that's not really what it's looking like. My hands aren't that high. It looks like a right, really nice normal swing, but that's the, the sensation or the feeling that you wanna have when you're trying this out. Ooh, that may have been the best one of the day. Definitely felt faster there and the ball is just carrying a lot longer on that particular swing. So freed everything up, what was the difference in the numbers there? So 122 club head speed, total distance was almost 320. Okay, so you can definitely see I started out with my shorter, more restricted swing, 107, got all the way up to 122. So that's 15 miles an hour of swing speed that I gained by freeing up my swing. And I don't know how many yards it was, probably almost 30, 40, 50 yards, something like that. A lot more distance. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to be swinging over 100 miles an hour for this to take place. I've seen hundreds of golfers that are swinging 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour. Those same principles will add 15, 16 miles an hour of swing speed to your swing and 30 or 40 yards. All, if you're swinging 80 miles an hour, maybe you get up to 96. If you're swinging 90, maybe you get up to 106. So these same principles are universal. They're gonna help you to swing faster, make golf a lot easier. All right, so what do we need to do from here? In this video, we talked about really how to load up in the backswing and the follow through. That's what I call the power turn in the top speed golf system. And really it's the number one thing you can do for distance. One thing I didn't mention in this video is what we can do with the shoulders. And I have some real secrets to getting those shoulders to rotate as much as possible in the swing and get you as much power as possible, even if you're not that flexible. One of my best power turn videos, I'm gonna play a preview of here in a second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen. Or if you don't see that card, that's no problem. Just go ahead and click the link below in the description and you'll get instant access to that video. I can't wait to help you talk about these key moves of the shoulders and help you build even more swing speed than we did in this video. Let's go and get started. With the correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's going to allow us to have a lot of power. So. We don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power. And we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn. If not more than that, I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos. And I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now, here we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're going to see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.